This is the Barbados Today Afternoon News for Monday, March 5th. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. We begin with news that the Department of Emergency Management is assuring the public that no tsunami alert has been issued for Barbados. The DEM was responding to a WhatsApp message which states that Barbados is among more than 30 countries under a tsunami alert following a magnitude 7.9 earthquake in Costa Rica. Barbados is currently under a high surf advisory until Wednesday evening. And the director of the Med Services, Sonia Nurse, stresses that this does not signify a tsunami threat. She also said tsunami warnings are issued by the Met Office and would not be issued to the public via WhatsApp. In other news this afternoon, one banking official is reporting that the current economic climate and the uncertainty over this year's elections has contributed to the current lull in local investment. Managing Director and CEO of Republic Bank, Anthony Clark, told Barbados Today that there is still good investment, still good demand for mortgages, but demand for investments loans has declined. And speaking on the matter of deposits, Clark said that interest rates are not likely to decline soon. The, the central bank removed the minimum savings rate uh, um, some time ago, and as a, as a result of that, uh, uh, market forces uh, came into play in terms of determining the rate, uh, and the rate did in fact fall. And I think that those market forces are more or less the same as they were then. So unless there is some major change in those forces, uh, deposit rates are likely to remain at a low level. Opposition MP Edmund Hinkson believes government's imposition of tuition fees on Barbadian students at the University of the West Indies is a criminal offence, and he believes they should be jailed for it. Hinkson was addressing a Barbados Labour Party rally at Montgomery Playing Field in Kayville last night. The Shadow Education Minister said many cabinet members who voted in favour of the fees had benefited from free education themselves. The Minister of Education, this minister has been by far the longest serving Minister of Education ever in this country. He has been Minister of Education throughout the whole 121 months that the Democratic Labour Party has taken so far. His legacy as the worst Minister of Education ever in the history of this country will be the one who oversaw the imposition of tuition fees on poor working-class Barbadian students. That ought to have been a criminal offence for which all the Democratic Labour Party members of Parliament who voted in favour of that in the budget in 2014 ought to be imprisoned. That is the truth of the matter because you prevented poor people from, us from going to the highest level in terms of their educational potential. When 13 of the 16 of those Democratic Labour Party parliamentarians would not be where they are today in terms of parliamentarians and in terms of the careers which led to their parliamentary life, but for you, the taxpayers of this country, paying for their university education. Meanwhile, opposition MP Trevor Prescott is accusing independent MP Dr. Maria Agard of using her position in parliament for the financial benefit of the United Progressive Party. Dr. Agard recently announced that she had taken on the role of leader of the opposition business in Parliament for the UPP. But addressing last night's rally, Prescott knocked Dr. Agard for her decision. One woman gets up and says, I am now the leader in Parliament. Parliament lasts two more days after that of the UPP. Because she wants to rape the state. There is a hundred and fifty thousand dollars that is given to political parties if they are members of parliament. She joined the party in less than two weeks because all of them look at the same they can rape the taxpayers at a time when people can't even get the reverse taxation. There's regional and international news after this short break.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. In news from the region, police in St. Kitts have charged a 34-year-old man with the murder of two sisters last week. Their bodies were found in a gully near a basketball court in the community of Keys Village last Thursday. Lawmen say Orvis Pogson of Keys Village was charged with the murders of Naomi Finch and Jamelia Finch. According to reports, one of the women was the girlfriend of the accused. Six people have been killed in the Twin Island Federation so far this year, and last year's figure was 23. On the international scene, a South Korean delegation met with the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un earlier today. A South Korean official said the meeting took place during a visit to the North aimed at encouraging dialogue between Pyongyang and the United States. More in this Reuters report. A small step towards peace on the Korean Peninsula. South Korea on Monday sent a delegation to North Korea with the goal of bringing Pyongyang and Washington to the table for talks. We will convey our President Moon Jae-in's wish to bring about the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and permanent peace. President Donald Trump has hinted he's ready to start a conversation with the North, but with one precondition. Pyongyang must first, quote, denuke, a demand that North Korea has rejected. Meanwhile, leader Kim Jong-un has also dropped clues he may be ready to talk. For one, he hasn't fired off any missile tests in months, and he's reached out to a big U.S. ally, his neighbor, South Korea, even sending athletes to Seoul to compete in the Winter Olympics. Any talks between Washington and Pyongyang would mark a big turning point in relations. Only a few months ago, Trump and Kim were trading heated insults, sparking fears the two countries were edging dangerously close to war. South Korea's delegation will visit Pyongyang for two days and then fly to the United States to brief the Trump administration on their talks. That's news this afternoon. Remember, there is more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and on screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marie-Claire Williams. Good afternoon.